Glasswire's firewall software reveals threats your antivirus cannot detect. What's really happening on your PC? Glasswire's firewall reveals all your network activity with full threat monitoring. Quickly see what happens while you're away. Utilize Glasswire's remote server monitoring feature. Fast Company notes that Glasswire brings attention to suspicious internet activities. Save 10% by visiting glasswire.com and using the coupon code TECHNINJA. Download the free version of Glasswire now at glasswire.com. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Kevin the Tech Ninja, and if you weren't around a couple months ago, then you missed the original video of this series, which is BBCB. And basically what it is is that I give you guys a thousand bucks to spend at b &H Photo to build me the best computer you can for gaming under a thousand dollars. And I had hundreds of entries, but the one that was the best that you guys voted for was Evora from Adam at Hearn. So guys, we're gonna take a look at it right now, do some benchmarks, do a little gaming, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts of it. All right, guys, let's do it. Adam decided to go with the S340 mid-tower case. This case is super popular due to its lightweight, sleek design and also its cord management properties. This case has over 20 management points for the cord and also an integrated PSU shroud. It also supports the Kraken X32 and X61 liquid cooling system and he also went with the red and black design as well for the extra pop in color. The power supply is the Corsair CX600, which is a 600 watt power supply that has a 122 millimeter fan. It also has the 80 plus bronze certification that delivers 80% efficiency at all times. The motherboard is an MSI B150 PC mate. This motherboard isn't that expensive and it's not a gaming motherboard, but for a budget build you have to cut corners somewhere and this is probably one of the components you can actually cut. Overall, it's a solid board. It has four DDR4 slots. It uses the LGA1151 slot for the chip, has six SATA ports, and it's also rocking the Intel AB150 Express chipset. The processor is an Intel i5-6600 Skylake. I'm not overclocking this chip at all, but it could be overclocked if needed. That's where the K comes in. Adam went with eight gigabytes of the Ballistic Sport RAM which isn't a whole lot, but when gaming on a budget, this is enough for the most part. And this is some pretty high-end RAM too, so it should do a really great job as far as gaming. The hard drive is the 850 EVO 256 gigabytes. This isn't the Pro Edition, so we're not seeing those extreme speeds, but it's still good enough for most circumstances. The video card is the MSI GeForce GTX 970 which is a very solid card. It has four gigabytes of RAM. And since this computer is mainly for gaming, the graphics ate up most of the budget for obvious reasons. Now here's a couple more things that wasn't included in the build budget, but these are things that I already had. Um, we're using a Corsair Strafe mechanical keyboard. It has RGB colors that are customizable, and it also has the brown mechanical switches. This is my first time really using a modern mechanical keyboard and there isn't really anything like it. And I'm sort of addicted to how it feels and how it sounds already. If you wanna check these out, go ahead and hit the link down below for Corsair's website. The mouse is from Corsair as well and this is the Sabre RGB. This mouse has some major responsiveness and matches the colors that are on the keyboard and it's just a nice touch. And also the headset is, well you guessed it, it's Corsair. They hooked me up with the Void headset. This monitor isn't really ideal for gaming, but it's just a dope screen, so I had to. This is the LG 34 inch curved ultra wide monitor. It does quad HD resolution, but for gaming, it could be a bit slow. Also the ratio isn't ideal for gaming as the resolution for gaming can get a little wonky when dealing with that 21 by nine ratio. But regardless for me, it's just one of the best monitors to look at. I installed Windows 10 and a few games, and this is my first time on Windows 10, and I'm actually impressed. I didn't run into any major bugs during my two weeks using the OS, and I was able to get into Windows from a cold boot within 20 seconds, which is pretty impressive. A bit slower from other computers that I've built, but still, nonetheless, from a cold boot, I can't complain. Now I know what you're thinking, okay Kevin, what about the gaming part? Well let's do it. First up is actually one of my favorite games of all time, and this is Battlefield 4. 
Now, sort of to break off into a little story here, actually played Battlefield 1942 Wake Island leaked beta. Yeah. I've been playing Battlefield since the beginning of the leaked version of Battlefield. So this is a game that's near and dear to my heart. I know it's a few years old, but it's something I really wanted to play at its max settings. So let's see how it was. Well, Battlefield 4 in 1080p on ultra settings ran about 100 frames per second on the nose. When a lot of action kicked in, then we did see it drop to around 88 frames per second. For what it's worth, I dropped it down to high as well, and I was getting around 120 frames per second, and it dropped down to around 105. When I bumped the resolution up to Quad HD on Ultra, my FPS was at about 48 frames per second, and it dropped down to the low 30s when a lot of action took place. It was still playable, but for me, when you drop below 60 frames, or even drop below 30, you can really tell the difference. However, on high settings, I was getting around 90 frames per second and it dropped just below 70 during this action, which is very good and for me, I think that was the best setting for Battlefield. Quad HD on high. After that, I popped in Witcher 3, which is a newer game that came out. More is not exactly going our way. We have a side. On Ultra Quad HD, it was sitting around 45 frames per second, and during combat, it was at a miserable 28 frames per second. But on 1080p Ultra, I was seeing around 70 frames per second, with it dipping down to around 55 frames during the high scenes, which isn't bad at all. Done drinking. Now still playing around with Witcher setting, I tried Quad HD on high and I was getting around 65 frames per second but once I was on horseback or even combat, it dropped down all the way to 38 frames per second which was playable but just didn't look right to me. Now I'm curious to see if this bottleneck was caused by the RAM or something else. I did check the RAM while gaming and I was pushing around 80% in use. So I think if we went to 16 gigabytes of RAM somehow by staying in the budget, I think we would have had better gaming when it came to Witcher 3. The last game we're trying out is Just Cause 3. Why? Just Cause. This is a high intense game with tons of opportunity for a lot of action. With Ultra Quad HD, I was looking at around 40 frames per second and it dropped down to 20 quickly. But with 1080p with Ultra settings turned on, I was between 78 and 60. It didn't actually go below 60 one time, but that 78 to 60 range was butter. It felt good, it played good, and I was actually really happy with it. But just to do some more comparisons, I went back to Quad HD and I put it on just high instead of ultra and I was looking at around 55 frames per second and it actually dropped down to around 30. So once again, I wasn't able to get those perfect settings, but at the same time, it just looked really good on 1080p and ultra HD. Hey guys, this was my first computer-based video, so let me know what you think. Um, obviously, I'm going to make mistakes as we go, but I plan to start focusing on PC gaming and mobile too. As always, guys, let me know what you think down below. I want to make improvements. I want to get better at this, and we'll go from there. As always, guys, hit them buttons down below. Make sure you follow me on social media to stay informed of what I'm working on next. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Peace.